Now that we've talked about chain length, let's take a look at molecular weights and molecular weight distributions associated with free radical polymerization. What we're going to see is that we can think about them in a framework that's similar to what we developed for step growth polymerization. But one thing that complicates our analysis is that there's two different termination mechanisms. And in particular, combination termination, uh, we have to think about because two growing chains are combining to form one uh, dead chain. So we got to understand how that impacts the uh, molecular weight distribution. As a starting point, we're going to assume that the monomer and initiator concentrations are constant. In other words, those aren't varying during the course of the reaction. So this is strictly valid in the early stages, but it's useful to at least get a simple framework that can help us understand the general features of the molecular weight distributions. I'm going to define a term called beta, which is the probability that a radical on an active chain propagate rather than terminate. So in other words, it's the probability that a reactive group on an active chain will continue uh, to produce a growing polymer. Now you might say, well, this seems actually the same as the extent of reaction parameter P that we developed for uh, step growth polymerization. And in some sense, it is similar in the fact that it expresses uh, the same kind of idea, but it's not the same. Because remember that P is an expression of the probability that functional groups have reacted. The uh, polymerization process in step growth uh, involves functional groups that are directly associated with the monomers. Uh, and because they have more than one functional group, then they can combine end to end uh, in various ways. So it looks kind of similar. Uh, and in some sense it is, but it, it's not the same thing as the extent of reaction. So be careful that you don't get those two parameters confused. Okay, so if we want to develop uh, an expression for this probability, we can notice that uh, the chance that a radical group on an active chain is going to continue to propagate uh, could be expressed in terms of a ratio of the rate of propagation to the rate of all the possible processes. Uh, so that includes propagation and termination. So in other words, the sum of the rate of propagation and termination uh, in the denominator, that's all the possible outcomes. And in the numerator, we have the outcomes of interest to us, which is propagation. And remember, termination can involve different mechanisms, combination, disproportionation, even chain transfer, uh, which we just talked about. So let's consider first the case of disproportionation termination. And I think you can uh, understand why we would want to look at that one first. It's the most straightforward because every active chain uh, will terminate uh, to form a dead chain. And so we can ask the question, what is the probability that a dead chain is an imer? Well, we can express that in terms of a product of the probability that a chain will propagate to a length i minus 1 times the probability that the chain will terminate on the next step, which is 1 minus beta. So remember, beta is the probability that the chain will continue to propagate, so 1 minus beta is the probability that the chain will terminate. Now, we can notice that this result actually looks analogous to uh, the result that we obtained in step growth polymerization in terms of the extent of reaction P. We got the probability of forming an imer was equal to 1 minus P times P to the I minus 1. But the meaning is different of these terms. Remember, beta represents the probability that the chain will continue to propagate an active chain P is an extent of reaction that represents the fraction of molecules with unreacted functional groups. Uh, so therefore, this term P to the I minus 1 uh, represents the probability that the chain has experienced I minus 1 reactions. So these have different meanings, but because they're equivalent results uh, and analogous results, they can be treated uh, using the same uh, analysis framework. Uh, and we obtain actually the same results for the degree of polymerization, molecular weight, in terms of beta that we obtained for step growth polymerization in terms of P. Uh, so we have expressions for the number and weight average degree of polymerization, the number and weight average molecular weight, and similarly with step growth, the polydispersity index, which is the ratio of the weight average to the number average molecular weight, equals 1 plus beta. Uh, 
And since for large molecular weight polymers, uh, those correspond to values of beta uh, that approach one, in other words, a high probability that they're going to propagate rather than terminate, then this polydispersity index also approaches two uh, 